Coming your way on the 49ers report, Jimmy Garoppolo said his calf feels great. Could he be in line to start on Sunday? Trey Lance, not good news. Looks like he cannot go. DeForest Buckner spoke with the media in the Bay Area, and Kyle Shanahan discussed that DeForest Buckner trade. Does he regret it? All of that coming your way. But first, I might even say that the Niners game on Sunday Night Football against the Indianapolis Colts is a must win. So if you think the Niners can beat the Indianapolis Colts, a team that's playing much better football with Carson Wentz playing really well, hit that thumbs up icon, like the video, and let's get into today's show. Welcome into the 49ers Report by Chat Sports. I am your host, Chase Senior. I hope all of you are having a fantastic week and a very good Wednesday. We start off today's show with some injury news, and it's positive injury news on the Jimmy Garoppolo front coming off that calf contusion that he suffered a couple weeks ago in that home loss against the Seattle Seahawks. Kyle Shanahan spoke with the media a few moments ago. He said, quote, I'm pretty optimistic that Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be ready for Sunday. So it seems as though right now on this Wednesday, Garoppolo is in line to start against the Colts in a massive, massive game with the Niners coming off three consecutive losses. Jimmy G even said himself his calf is feeling really good. Saw some video coming out of the practice from Santa Clara in the shadows of Levi Stadium. And this has kind of been the theme throughout the week that Garoppolo has been a limited participant, but he is taking part in practice and, in my opinion, looks pretty good in doing so. He suffered that calf contusion, as I mentioned, in that loss against the Seahawks, which, which paved the way for Trey Lance to replace him in that second half. That's why Lance made his first career start against the Arizona Cardinals two weeks ago. Sticking with Trey Lance and speaking of the rookie quarterback who was selected number three in this past year's NFL draft, he suffered that sprained knee at some point in that game. He didn't even seem to really know when he suffered that, but when he went to bed that night. That's when he felt it. He said he didn't really feel it until later on that evening. He had an MRI at the time. It's not going to be a long-term injury, but Kyle Shanahan saying today he doesn't think that Trey Lance is going to suit up, which would of course mean that Jimmy Garoppolo will get the start against the Colts. Nate Sudfeld for the second consecutive week going to be the backup if Lance is not able to go. Do you have confidence in Jimmy Garoppolo if he gets the start in Kyle Shanahan's offense? That's the question that we're cook it up for you here on the 49ers report. Get into the comment section right now. Sound off. Type C for I'm confident if Jimmy G starts. Type D for Dicey. Let me know where you're at on this one. Niners going to host the Colts on Sunday Night Football. We'll be doing a watch party for it right here on the channel. All of the watch parties that we've done this year have been a massive success, so make sure you subscribe and join us if you haven't already done so. The line kind of fascinates me because from the odds makers, it opened up with the Niners being five-point favorites. It's gone down to three and a half. I've seen it fluctuate and go back up to four, but right now, according to BetUS, our presenting sponsor for today's show, Niners three and a half point favorites, and that over under very very low, Vegas expecting this to be a low scoring game. If you want to lay some money down on this game or any game across the NFL in week seven, you can do so thanks to our sportsbook partner, BetUS. If you go to chatsports.com slash 49bet, enter that promo code on your screen, Niners125, you get a 125% deposit bonus. Yesterday, we talked about DeForest Buckner making his return to the Bay Area to take on the San Francisco 49ers on Sunday. And there are a lot of talking points around Buckner's return, especially after he spoke with all of the Beat Boys on Wednesday. He said that, uh, you know, this is going to be the first time that he's coming back to San Francisco since getting traded traded away for that 2020 first round pick in that draft. The Niners ended up selecting basically his replacement and Javon Kinlaw, as well as Brandon Ayuk later on in that round. He then signed with Indianapolis that four-year $84 million contract extension after he was originally drafted number seven by San Francisco in the 2016 NFL draft. That's why trading away Buckner after recently drafting him didn't make a lot of sense to me, especially if you were just drafting another player at that same position. But he spoke with the media today, and I do want to relay some of the quotes that he did say. He said this about kind of those contract negotiation, negotiations excuse me, with San Francisco at the time. When I had my conversation with general manager John Lynch, we sat down and I told John, I know my agent is telling me I'm worth this, but I'm obviously able to meet in the middle some way somehow. I think that's pretty telling. I do want to be here, but you know, I didn't want to take, you know, too big of a pay cut to where, you know, what I'm worth because I had a baby on the way. I mean, 
You deserve a pay raise or little things like that. You're not going to sell yourself short. You're not going to say, you know what, I'm just going to take the pay cut. That's it. So I was looking at, you know, uh, for my fa- looking out for my family at the end of the day, and unfortunately, it just didn't go the way you wanted it to. And it's just like I said, it's the nature of the business. And of course, it's the nature of the business when DeForest Buckner ends up signing that four-year, $84 million contract extension. Some additional reporting on top of this. Buckner saying that the San Francisco offer never even came anywhere close in the neighborhood of that contract that he signed with Indy. And as we know, Buckner went on to have a terrific season in 2020 when he was one of the best interior defensive linemen across the entire National Football League. He was excellent, whereas the Niners' defense last year really struggled. Now, Eric Armstead, who basically plays the same position, has the same role, is having a really good year this year, but last year he wasn't all that good. This year, Buckner and Armstead have been about even on par with one another. This year, Buckner compiling 28 tackles, two sacks, three tackles for loss, zero forced fumbles, and zero fumble recoveries. But for a guy who was still in his prime at the time and is still in his prime right now, I think it was a mistake for the Niners not to sign him to a long-term deal. You drafted him back in 2016. You obviously thought at the time highly of the player. He should have been a part of this core. Yes, you had other players that you wanted to sign to larger deals, but why not give DeForest Buckner the bag when he already had proven that he can be one of the best interior defensive linemen in the sport. So I say all that and ask you this. Do you think the Niners made a mistake not keeping DeForest Buckner? Maybe he's going to wreak havoc against this bad Niners offensive line that's very, very thin. Type Y for yes or type N for no. Kyle Shanahan also said some interesting things about not having Buckner in the Bay anymore at the practice facility and not on his defense with defensive coordinator D'Amico Ryan. And I thought producer Marshall Green made a pretty good point in saying you don't often hear coaches speak this way about former players, but this is what Shanahan said about Buck. I miss Buck a lot. I knew that we would. That was a very tough decision. Wanted to keep Buck bad. It came down to do you want to pay this money to one guy or do you want to keep two guys plus the 13th pick in the draft? I would side with keeping that guy because he was already a proven player at that time, whereas the rookies, you really never know. It can be a high miss rate in the first round and all throughout the draft. That's why I was just kind of confused by the trade at the time, and I know a lot of people in the Niner gang are with me. As for what Buckner did last year, I said that he was great. You got to see the numbers to just further prove the point. 58 tackles a year ago in that COVID season, nine and a half sacks as an interior defensive lineman. That's excellent. 26 quarterback hits, and he was very active in the backfield as well with 10 tackles for loss. A lot of people are probably saying Buckner, way better than Eric Armstead. Last year, that was certainly the case. This year, not necessarily the case. In fact, according to Pro Football Focus, we had talked about this yesterday on our live show, Eric Armstead has the higher grade, 89.4 to 74 flat, one sack to two, 16 hurries to 14 for Buckner, one quarterback hit, Buckner has more at four, pressures, Buckner has more 20 to 18, but these guys have basically been the same player for their respective teams throughout the course of the 2021 season. But long term and from a consistency point of view, I think Buckner has been the more explosive player, a guy who can wreak havoc on a weekly basis, whereas Eric Armstead has been good this year, but last year I really thought he was just average. Another reminder for you before we head out of here on today's show, as always, we appreciate you for making the 49ers report a part of your day. Sunday night football, Niners reeling from those three straight loss losses coming out of the bye. This is a huge, huge game, and we're going to be live for another watch party. Make sure you subscribe and join us. It all starts off 8.05 p.m. Eastern, 5.05 p.m. Pacific. Subscribe to the channel because we're less than 400 people away from 43,000.